Hey guys, welcome to Artsy Rose's channel. Um, I am definitely excited to be here this morning. Had a little bit of a rough go getting started. Again, Restream wasn't playing to Facebook. I've got to figure out, you know, watch some YouTube videos on why that's happening. Um, and I had to take care of a couple of things this morning, like running by the post office to get my niece's uh, 18th birthday present in the mail. And it just kind of threw me behind. Um, and so anyway, I am live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube and we are streaming on Twitch. Woohoo! Um, so I think we are good to go. I am so happy you guys are here. Happy hump day, right? It's Wednesday. Um, and today is going to be all about St. Patrick's Day themed activities. I've got my green on, my green hat, um, because next Thursday is St. Patrick's Day. I cannot believe, like literally cannot believe it's the middle of March already. And spring break camps start in two days at my art studio. And um, totally, totally feeling blessed and my heart is full. Camp is almost sold out. I think I have a spot this Friday and a spot the following Monday. And if anybody's out of school the following Tuesday, I'm open as well. Um, I think it would be very few of you. <laughs> it's kind of a weird spring break this year. Everybody's is a little different. So <clears throat> we are going to get started. I am going to use supplies that I have here at the studio. Of course, you guys um, are going to use what you have. Now, down below, we have Biggie and Raina. Uh, Raina is on the left. Biggie is on the right. Um, Biggie's head is bigger. That's how you know. <laughs> who is who. Um, and, you know, he's got more wrinkles on it on his head, too. But anyway, this activity right here, if you did not catch it, uh, it is a um, oil pastel, how to draw, how to color, how to blend, and it is all over on uh, YouTube. So you can definitely watch this narwhal video um, over there, and it's super fun. And I just, I love, like, love oil pastels. Um, but today we're just going to use what we have. I'm going to be using some acrylics, some markers, some glue, some uh, glitter, some scissors, uh, paintbrushes, pencils, sharpies, all the things. So grab whatever art supplies you have and you can dive right in. Now, as always, I will be recording this so that I can upload an edited version to YouTube later. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, if you wind up liking this video, like it and um, definitely share it with any of your mom friends, art teacher friends, um, classroom teacher friends that need an activity for St. Patrick's Day because I will be streaming multiple activities. So I am going to gather up a few more things and then we will get started. <laughs> They're like, what is she doing? All right. I'm going to grab my acrylic or excuse me, um, alcohol based markers. It's okay, Raina. It's okay. Go lay down. And then, of course, I have all of my other supplies here. And I am going to need a blank empty plate for the first activity. Now, this one does have a little bit of paint on it, but honestly, not worried about it because I will be covering this up with color. So if you guys are ready to join me, um, first things first, I'm going to be using a plate, like I said, but you could use watercolor paper, um, poster board, cardboard, anything that you have that would be sturdy enough to hold some paints and or markers, oil pastels, whatever that may be. But I'm going to go ahead and get this started on record. <clears throat> Do 
Good morning, guys, and thank you for visiting Artsy Rose's channel. I am all about the St. Patrick's Day activities, and today we are going to be making a pot of gold with a rainbow over the top. Now, gather up the supplies that you have, watch this short little intro, and then we will get started. <clears throat> okay, first things first, um, I need my tape. I know I threw it up here. What did I do with it? OMG. Are we for real in it right now? We are. Gracious me, guys. I'm so sorry. There we go. little bit flustered today. My, my routine is a little off today, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna go with the flow. That's what us art teachers <clears throat> and moms have to do. I think allergies are high today. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna start with this taped and we'll see how long it stays taped. I don't really anticipate it's going to stay that way for very long, but we'll see. Maybe so. Okay, guys. All right. I am ready to get started. As always, I have different camera angles for you guys to make viewing more pleasurable and simple. And then of course we've got the puggies. Raina is on your left, Biggie is on your right, and this is pretty much what they do the whole time. But you know, hey, that's okay. So we've got the pug cam. Now I do really love this view because you can get all three angles at the same time. Now this is a feature that is over on um, my stream deck and, or my ATM mini, excuse me, uh, which is a streaming deck. And I love it. It took me a bit to figure it out, but my key was save the settings, take pictures of the settings on my phone because I do have to reset it every time I record it. So little tidbit there, take pictures of things that you wanna remember on your phone and favorite them. So that way you can find them real easy and setup is fast. Now. I've got my paper plate set up. I've got my coffee poured. It is a hazelnut coffee with a hazelnut creamer and a little bit of sugar because that's how I got to do it. Drop me a comment. How do you like your coffee? All right. Now, first things first, I do have some paints on my plate and I did, my brown's thinner than the rest. I did go ahead and give myself lots of colors. Obviously, it's not all the colors that we need in the rainbow, but it is quite a few. So we're gonna start with these. And I've got my napkins, my water cup, I've got my brushes in the back. Um, and so I'm gonna grab a, oh, decent size brush. And this is a three quarters inch flat brush. And this is what I'm gonna use to make the black part of the pot. But first things first, we actually wanna mark off part of our plate so that we can have a, um, you know, a, a, an opening so that way it gives us the feel of the pot down low and then the rainbow across the top. So we're going to draw our line all the way across and then we're going to cut. The nice thing about this kind of plate is it already has that ring, that groove right there that you can use to cut into. So that way we know, um, we know where to cut. It makes it real simple. I am using a very sharp pair of scissors so that way I can poke through. And then the trick is keep your fingers separated from where you wanna poke so that way you are not poking your fingers. So we are going to very carefully cut right in here, just like so. And 
I'm cutting along that groove that's already in the plate back to my line that I created and then I'll cut across here. Now I am going to hold on to this chunk that I'm cutting out and we're going to do something with it first. Okay. So first things first with this little guy, we are going to paint it yellow. Okay. Now the backside is not so slippery. So I think I'm going to flip it over and use the backside, the not slick side. Now here is a little pointer. The most yellows are pretty bright coming straight out of the bottle. And so the trick is you use a little bit of purple, which is yellow's complement. And we mix that into some of our yellow about however much we think we need to paint this little chunk that we cut out. Now this is going to darken it up a little and make it have a bit of a golden vibe. I am going to mix this up a little bit more. There we go. And if I wanted to, I could add a pop of white just to soften it some and make it have a little bit of a creamy vibe. Okay. We're going to roll all that extra out. And you know, honestly, since it's already in this brush, I'm just going to use it instead of wasting because we've got all that paint already in the brush. So I'll just use that instead of wasting. And so we'll paint this on like so sweep, sweep, sweep. There we go. Awesome. There. Okay. So we swept that across and now we have some gold for our pot of gold later. Now I'm actually going to cut this into rings or I mean circles. And so that will make it look more like pieces of gold. Now I do have a little bit of gold glitter. If you don't have gold glitter, that's okay. It's not necessary. I just think it's fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little pinch. I'm going to move my paint out of the way so we don't glitter up my paint. And I am just going to sprinkle this on top all over this gold. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this. I'm sure you have. Um, anytime you paint some kind of paper um, or cardboard or even, um, uh, oh my goodness, foam core, anytime you paint anything like that, it's going to curl up on you a little bit or get a little wave in it. And so with that being said, um, don't worry about it. It will flatten back out. If it doesn't, you can always put something weighted on top of it so that it will flatten it back out. Or after it dries, we can curl it, you know, in the opposite direction of the way that it is going. And that's going to help it kind of go back the correct direction as well. There. Okay. So we're going to set that aside and let it dry for a little bit. And we'll just set it over there and we'll get back to this. I never want to leave a paintbrush out <clears throat> with dried paint or with wet paint in it because it will dry up. So we'll just throw that in our water cup for the time being. And what we're going to do next is actually, um, well, we could, we could go ahead and paint our black. If, if you don't trust yourself, you could do your rainbow first and then paint your black. Totally, totally up to you. So I am going to go ahead and make a nice crisp line going across there, a nice crisp line going across here. Depending on where you're painting, you may want to make sure that you are covering your painting surface. If you do not have acrylic paint, you could definitely use other things. Now the slick side of the plate does make it a little hard to use crayons or even oil pastels sometimes because it's a real, these kind of plates have a real waxy finish on them, but you could use marker. That's always an idea. And here's a fun little trick. If you wanted to, you could use, um, 
you know, like a Crayola marker, a water-based marker, and then paint over it with just water and it's going to make it look like watercolor paints are on there. Now I'm trying to make sure I get in these grooves. There we go. Awesome. Okay. There. I think that's a pretty solid layer on there from what I can tell. So now I'm gonna stick this brush in the water cup as well. And maybe I'll slide my water cup over there just so I don't accidentally knock it over. Okay, and maybe I should put the lid on the glitter too. <laughs> we don't need a glitter bomb going off in the craft room, right? Now, the next step that I'm gonna do is not what you have to do, but the next step that I am gonna do is I am gonna go over to um, markers. I'm going to switch to markers and I'm actually going to use a alcohol based marker um, and an alcohol ink marker and use that for my rainbow. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. It may be a little tricky because of the grooves. Paint may be a better option. So if you have all the colors of paint, I would do that. Plus the color might be more bold and um, really stand out a little bit better. Okay. All right, these um, markers are by Artify and I love them. Look at all the colors. The colors are numbered and these have lasted quite a while. Um, they are dual tipped. So there's one side that's bigger and one side that is smaller. Um, I have to be really careful next to my um, black because the black is still wet, right? Now, I know, you know what, actually, let's see, we need red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So we need six lines. So if we found the center point, we could mark it. There's the center. There's the center on that side. And, oh, there's the buggies. Okay, then I can divide each of these two sections that we just created into two more sections. So one, two, so that gives us one, two, three on this side, one, two, one, two, three on that side. Same thing over here, one, two, so now we have three sections there, one, two. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six sections on our rainbow and we are ready to go. So see there's, can you guys see those little pencil lines? So now we have an idea of about where we want our color to go. And actually, I think maybe I'll start with the pointy tip. Ah, I knew that wasn't going to stay up there, guys. Okay, and we're just gonna try to kind of follow this around. There we go. Over to the other side to that groove. There, so there's our red. And then I can use the thicker side. Maybe I'll turn it upside down. <laughs> I can use the thicker side now to actually color it in. I know you probably can't hear the birds outside, but they are singing so pretty today. And sadly, they're gonna, they're gonna be really sad tomorrow because it's gonna be so cold here tomorrow afternoon, evening on into Friday, OMG. We're getting a late snow. I'm actually not sad about it. For whatever reason, even though cold like really hurts my skin, I'm actually excited about one more last winter hurrah before spring. Don't know if you guys have ever heard of Raynaud's, but that's I have that and basically um, your skin is super sensitive to the cold 
especially your appendages, so like your fingers and toes. Um, and my blood vessels shrink up so much that the circulation is really poor. And it is the, oh my gosh, it's excruciating pain. <laughs> but I have never met really anybody else with this. My mom has a little bit of a hard time with it, but I don't know that hers is quite like mine. Like all my fingertips will literally go white. My toes will go white and, and oh my goodness. So to invest in good gloves and good thick socks <laughs> in the winter, I actually even have heated gloves. I totally forgot those last night for my daughter's soccer game. I should have brought those. There we go. We're working our way around, guys. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Okay, these grooves kind of slow you down, but just make sure you take your time. You get down in there. There we go. And I kind of like the way these markers are looking on these, this plate. I've never used them on a paper plate before and I really love how bold these colors are, or this color is anyway. There we go. There is our, yes, layer one of the rainbow, red. The R in Roy G. Biv. Okay, next we have our orange, so I'll go to the fine tip first. Flip her over again. Whoop. <laughs> and my black is almost dry, actually, guys. We're going to go down and around and back up to the groove on that side. Then We'll flip sides of our marker and color again. And we're going to repeat this on all the colors. Remember at any time you can totally pause me, uh, rewind me, fast forward me, like on the coloring of the rainbow, you could most definitely just move on ahead and of course work at your own pace. We all work at different paces and there's nothing wrong with that. And also remember, this is your art. You do you, you make it how you want it. You are your own special artist in your way. May not look like my way. You know, maybe you want pastel colors in your rainbow. Maybe you don't want all the colors that I chose. You want to just do your own colors, you know? This one is a melon yellow. I think I'm gonna give this a little try and let's see. Cause I also have a lemon yellow past or a pale yellow, but let's try this one. Okay, we're gonna go down and around and back up to that groove and then flip our sides. And here we are. So, oh, I kind of like this yellow. It's like a goldeny yellow. Get in those grooves. All right, fabulous. Okay, and then green, and I love this emerald green, guys. It is gorgeous. Use the pointy tip first. We'll come down and around. And back up. Flip to the big side. can't color quite as fast with this green as I did the yellow because like obviously if I got yellow on the orange it wouldn't matter because it wouldn't be that noticeable but if I covered up my yellow with this green it would 
be noticeable. So, gotta be aware. Awesome, there's our green, and then we have blue and purple. This blue is kind of pretty. It says it is Indian blue. We'll try it. Okay, so we did the fine tip outline, thicker tip fill in. OMG. I love it. Okay, and then our last one's going to be our purple. We're so close. Now this one says it's deep violet or there's a dark blue light. Hmm. Obviously, we don't have to draw a line this time because we're on our last section. So, oh, that's pretty. So we'll just go slow so we don't cover up our blue. Not too much anyway, right? Oh my. Sometimes, you know, your markers will get away from you. <laughs> there we go. Nice thing with these chisel tips is you can turn them, oh, darn, one direction or the other. Well, you know, we got a little indigo going on over here now. Oops. There we go. Okay. OMG. I love it. I love um, the brightness of these alcohol based markers. It's so cool. Um, and I like the bold black paint at the bottom, but I almost think these markers would have done the same thing in black. You know, they're, it, they're pretty bold. Um, so now we have our shimmery um, gold chunk that we're recycling and reusing um, to make our gold that goes in the pot of gold. And then I was also thinking we could put like maybe a shamrock, four leaf clover, whatever you want to call it, right in the front of our pot. Why not? Um, and call it good. So, all right, here we go. Um, I do have a scrap of green paper, okay? Or it's not a scrap, it's a whole piece, but we're just gonna cut, oh, I don't know. Here we go. We'll just cut like a square of paper like this, and then we'll draw our shamrock. Now, I am not the bestest at drawing shamrocks, but we're gonna try, okay? So, we've got our, our, our chunk we just took off. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of a diagonal curve, a little bit of a diagonal curve, connect at the bottom, okay? Then, let's get this over for you guys. All right, now we're gonna do almost like a heart. There's one, two, curve, curve, three, curve, curve, four, and connect. There we go. Now 
we could, let's try this one. This is called Peacock Green. And I'm gonna use it to kind of outline around the edges with a dark green. Now when I cut it out, I'm gonna try really hard to leave the black outline on there. I could even, you know, potentially thicken up this black outline to make it easier to cut out, or you can just leave it alone and then cut slow and steady so that you try to leave that black outline over there. All right. There. Okay, so now we're gonna use our scissors and we are going to cut these out just like so. And notice that I really don't move my scissors a whole lot. I'm just doing little chomps. And then I turn the paper inside the scissors, just like so. There we go. Around and around we go. Oh my goodness, I'm an art teacher for a reason, not a music teacher, for real. There we go. If you are liking what you're seeing, if this is kind of calm and chill, um, and you wanna see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. It definitely really helps and supports me and what I'm doing and this adventure that I'm on. Um, and, you know, turn on the notifications. Okay, so we got our cute little shamrock. We're gonna use some glue sticks. I will say, um, I feel like glue sticks were, are not made as good as they used to be. So definitely like really rub that glue on there, guys. Or even use a liquid glue if you want to. Just remember a little dab will do you with the liquid glue. All right, so we rubbed that all over. And now we're gonna stick this you, know, you could put it right in the middle. You could even put it over on the side. Ooh, you could make two and put them on the sides. Um, so you guys like totally customize this and make it your own. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna rub those down like so. OMG. OMG. Okay, now all of our little, uh, this chunk that we have left, I'm gonna try my best to use every bit of it um, for the gold. Okay. So I'm going to just go kind of curve that corner off, keep turning the gold in my scissors. There we go. And then we'll do, oop. <laughs> I literally just sprinkled a ton of gold glitter into my coffee. Boo. Oh well. And honestly, it's okay if it's a little wonky because that could be the piece that's hiding behind the pot, you know? Like where you actually glue it on. There we go. Ta da. And then I wonder could we get some little pieces maybe? Now, had I put my yellow on a little thicker, this gold would not be flicking off like this. So, you know, lesson learned. If yours is flicking off, you could always paint some glue, liquid glue over the top, and then when it dries, it'll dry clear, and it will seal it all in. Okay, so now I've got all of these pieces, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue down at the bottom, like so. And then I am going to glue it back behind like that, okay? So we've got those two. Trying to put a decent amount of glue on there. OMG. Ooh, you know what? We could totally cheat, guys. 
you know what we could do? We could glue it, but whoop, we could also, sorry guys, put some tape on the back. Oh my gosh, that one just doesn't want to stick. So we're going to, we are going to use what we have to make this work. So I have some tape that I could totally just put on the back like that. There. Hello. Now you're stuck, mister, right? Get a little piece of tape, stick it on the back, and now it's stuck on there. And we'll do another one. Oops. Just want it to barely be on there like that. Barely, barely. Okay, and stick that one on there like so. Okay, and then these little guys maybe kind of float up like that. Or do we want to float in front of or behind? Either way. Either way works. There we go. And because I'm using clear tape, you really can't see it. Oh my goodness. So stinking cute. I love it. So we did it. We created our very own pot of gold with a rainbow. Um, this would be such a fun St. Patrick's Day activity or craft to do. You could even break it into steps, you know, like we did. We did our yellow and sprinkled our glitter. Then we did our black. Okay. Then maybe read a story, St. Patrick's Day story, and then come back to it and work on the um, shamrock maybe, or they could go ahead if their black stripe, color their rainbow, and then work on their shamrock, um, cut out their gold. And another trick too to making great circles is find something round that is the size that they need. They can cut around it or, you know, trace it and then cut around it and they have a great circle. Because sometimes it's really hard to make circles. So that's an idea. Anyway, I had such a great time creating this very fun St. Patrick's Day piece with you. And I truly hope that you will come back for some more great St. Patrick's Day activities or other art projects. Thank you guys. Have a great day, great week, great month, great year, and be kind. Okay, so we got our first video recorded. You guys got to work along with me and hopefully create your own pot of gold. I would love, love, love for you guys to um, post a picture of your finished product or what modifications do you think you would use? Um, maybe even could you attach like some of those fake gold coins on top of this with some hot glue? So, you know, what are some modifications that you would do for this project? But I'm in love. Definitely going to be doing this at the art studio. All right. I'm just checking out everything and seeing where we're at. It looks like everything is still streaming, so we are good. If you guys are watching, drop me a comment. Where are you watching from? Um, what St. Patrick's Day plans do you have? Uh, if you miss this video, you can go back to the feed and watch it, or I will be editing it today and getting it uploaded for Friday's video. Um, now, I have more St. Patrick's Day activities for us. So we're going to go ahead and get started on those and I will begin recording that as well. Um, there's the little guys. They're still sleeping. Oh, there's Ricky. He's peeking at me. <laughs> He's so cute. 
Those eyebrows get me every single time. All those wrinkles on his head. All right, um, so for our next activity, we are gonna need another plate. And this is one, it got a little smushed on one side and it's got a little, I don't know what it is, but a little smudgy smudge on there. So that's okay though. So we're going to not even worry about it. Now, in addition to this, I think I have one more plate. Yes, I do. So on this plate, so I guess realistically you need two plates. We're gonna make a pot of gold and then this is gonna be our rainbow. So I've got two cheapo paper plates. I've got my paint ready to go, my brushes and water cup and um, napkins. So we will get started here in just a minute. Okay. There's Lippy Doge Puggies again. Dear day are. Okay. Okay, guys. I promise I'm getting myself together. <laughs> Okay, all right. <clears throat> so much hair today. Okay, so much hair today. Just put those paper plates. Oh, here they are. Okay. <laughs> I'll get with the program sometime. I guess we'll call this a decoration on our next recording. Okay. Hey there guys, welcome to my channel. We are gonna be making a fun rainbow pot of gold themed decoration right after these quick little tidbits. Okay friends, so you are definitely gonna need um, whatever supplies you have. I'm gonna be using two cheapo paper plates that kind of have that wax finish on them. Um, but if you don't have that, use cardboard, use uh, watercolor paper, whatever it may be that you have that's a little bit thicker, poster board. Um, I'm also going to be using acrylic paints, but I learned that some alcohol-based markers work excellent on this. You can even use um, water-based markers like Crayolas and for this project as well. I will say it's a little tricky using crayons or oil pastels on top of these waxy based plates, but it is possible. Also, I'm gonna be having using some scissors and some glue, paintbrush, water cup, paints. I have acrylic paints, napkin, <sighs> all the things, whatever it is that you have, I am sure that you are smart enough and creative enough to adapt what you have to what I'm doing so that you can create your own masterpiece. So we, um, I am going to use the first plate. I'm trying to see which one's kind of going to be better. I think this one is going to be better for the first step of the project. And what I am going to do is I am going to um, make a what looks like a pot of gold. Okay, so I am going to use the curve that's already on this plate. So I created like a great little smile piece right there. And, oh my. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Let's turn this camera back on. Okay. We have 
function here. We have function here, guys. There we go. Okay. Ta-da. Okay, so we've got the smile on the curve where the groove on the plate is. And then from here, I am going to bring out and create another curve that's like a C. Another curve that's like a backward C, kind of almost is looking like a face. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of a dip down and back up. So it looks like a curve like so. Then um, on top, I'm going to do some gold pieces like so. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could most definitely trace them with black like I did, but don't feel like you have to. Now, I am cleaning my brush out over here. So I'm really smooshing my brush in that water, wiping it on the inside of the lid, and then drying it off on my, on my napkin, okay? Now, earlier for the last project that I did, I made a gold um, colored paint. And the way that I did that, a golden, was I grabbed a little bit of purple and I mixed it in to some yellow. Okay. Yellow and purple are complementary colors, so you can use them to darken each other. <clears throat> then if you wanted to add a little pop of white, you most definitely could. So we'll roll that off. And I'm going to go ahead and paint my gold first because it's the lighter of the two colors. Obviously, my pot is going to be black. And it's okay if we paint over our Sharpie lines because after this dries, we could most definitely retrace those, right? Now, I am going to go back and put this paint on a little thicker. I did learn with the last project that I put too thin of a layer of gold on and then when I put my glitter on top of that it kind of flicked off when it came time to cut it all out. So if I put this on a little thicker, yes it will take longer to dry but the gold should stick to it better. Okay so I've got some gold glitter right here. I'll use just a little sprinkle of roux and sprinkle this on top like that like like a pinch like a pinch of salt right a pinch of glitter so we'll sprinkle that on there and the nice thing about doing it on the plate is i can then kind of curve it and sort of dump it back into the container right okay that's beautiful i love the shimmer okay now I am going to use, I'm going to go ahead and clean this brush, wipe it on the inside of the cup, dry, 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 and we'll use some black paint. It's okay, Raina. She does not like any kind of loud sounds at all. If the door was not closed, she would run to my bed and jump up there. I think that she thinks that's like her safe space. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Follow the curve around here. Follow the curve here. Awesome. Okay. And We'll just fill this in back and forth from edge to edge, just like so. And that is a great way to kind of hide your brush strokes if you go from an edge to an edge. And realistically, we have to cut this out, so we could totally have gotten out of the lines, but you know, there, excellent pot of gold. After this dries a little bit, we could even put like a shine um, on the side of the pot of the gold, right? So we're going to set this aside for a minute. We'll just let this dry. 
over there. And I've got my second plate right here. So this is the plate that I am going to create a rainbow pattern on. Now, you could play with this. Like I could do red around and then orange and then yellow and then green and then blue and then purple. Or I could do stripes kind of going across. You can have so much fun with this. You could do stripes coming in and then do a circle design in here. Totally however you want to do it. And I would encourage you if you're doing this with your students or with your kids, like give them the ideas and see what they come up with. I love showing the kiddos like or giving them, showing them whatever it may be, all kinds of different ideas and suggestions, and then seeing what their brain morphs all of that information into and then putting it on to uh, whatever it is we're doing. So that's one little tidbit that I would give you when you are presenting this project. Now, I am going to, let's see, maybe I think I've got a brush. Yeah, see it's not as big as our big flat one, but it's also not as small as the pointy one. And I will get after this. So I don't have to clean my brush so much. I'm gonna start with the yellow. There we go. So above this obviously would be orange, and then above that would be red if we're going in rainbow order, which I guess you don't have to go in rainbow order, right? Okay, now I can use, of course I just stuck my hand in the wet paint. <laughs> we can use a little bit of red and mix that on over here into my golden color. Add some more yellow, kind of make our own orange. What do y'all think? Maybe some more yellow. always best to start with the lightest color first, which I did. I put the red into the yellow. I just put too much red into the yellow. There. Now I can use this and kind of come across up here, or I could have went into my green next. That could have been an option. Here we go. Oh, I didn't need to clean my brush. Let's just dry that guy off. We'll leave that orange in there, no big deal. Grab some red and fill all of this in with red. Okay, red, orange, yellow. Now I'll clean my brush because if I were to put a red brush into my green, I would be making a darker green, right? So we've got our yellow, and then to make green, we've got our blue. So a big old chunk of yellow, little bit of blue. When we mix those together, we make our own green. Fabulous. The more blue you put, the darker your green will be. The more yellow you have, the lighter your green will be. And it will go more towards a... Um, what am I thinking? Um, lime green. There we go. Okay, green. Okay, now just for fun, I'm gonna mix some more blue into my green and kind of make my own turquoise. Okay. Here we go. So we'll do turquoise next. Now, is turquoise in the rainbow? Maybe right where the blue and the green mix on the rainbow, like in a real rainbow. Um, but typically you don't, you don't list it off when you're listing the colors of the rainbow, right? Okay, now we'll go into some blue, which is still looking a little turquoisey because I did not clean my brush. Obviously, if you want your colors to be true and intense, you want to clean your brush between them, but I kind of like to not clean my brush and just see what happens. <laughs> now, I'm going to go into some blue and purple and make my own indigo. 
So this is maybe a little bit more blue than purple because that's obviously what was in my brush. So I can grab a bit of purple and sweep this on top like so. Keep going. There, now it's kind of taken on that indigo feel. OMG. I am going to clean this out of my brush. That was a lot of paint just loaded up in there. Dry your brush every time you wash it. Now I'll go into straight purple. There. There we go. And also just for fun, I'm going to grab some white now flip this over and do like a whitish purple. There we go. And then I'm going to grab just a teensy bit of red and kind of do a pinkish purplish like magenta right there on the tip. So why not? We just used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors in our rainbow and we had Definite fun mixing those colors. I'm going to clean that brush, keep it in my jar, and then realistically, we want to get those to dry off, right? Um, if you have a blow dryer, that's what I like to use is a blow dryer. That's really the only reason I ever use a blow dryer is to <laughs> blow dry my paintings and blow dry my dogs when they get out of the shower. So um, anyway, how many of you use a blow dryer for other purposes? Drop me that comment. Tell me what you use it for. Okay, so this is gonna take a bit longer. So while we wait on this to dry, we'll just trade spots with our pot of gold. And my pot of gold is still a little damp because I did put that uh, black on kind of thick. Oopsies, that's okay. So I'm gonna just keep fanning this. Just fanning, fanning, fanning. There we go. And I'll just be careful. Oh, there goes Raina. She does not like those noises. It's okay, Raina. So we are going to cut out our pot of gold. Now, it's kind of tricky cutting these round plates. So get rid of plate when you can. Okay, get it out of your way. There we go. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things to this pot of gold before we call it finished. Cut off some more paper because I could not turn it with that big old chunk. So it's little chomps and turn the paper as you go. Ooh, I scraped off some paint with my scissors. Okay. Turning. There we go. Gracious. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. There. Now we have our cute little pot of gold. So fun. And I want to do a couple of things. So first things first, I'm going to grab me a smaller brush. I'm going to dip in my black paint. I'm going to do a little touch up there where my scissors tore that off. And I almost can't even see my original pieces of gold. But, you know, we're just going to kind of try to find them. There we go. And because of the glitter, I can't get a totally solid line, but that is okay. You know, just try your best. There we go. Kind of outline all the way over so you get that edge outlined as well. Oh my goodness. This is definitely another project we're going to do at the studio. Okay, wash that off. Now I'm going to grab some white. We'll do a little shine on there. There we go. And then maybe a shine across the top like so. This adds a little bit of depth and dimension. 
to our pot. Okay, put that back in there. If you have the space, you might think about keeping these because you could use them for something else, right? Um, oh man, <laughs> I had orange on my, or yellow on my finger and now I have yellow on my pot of gold. That's okay. Black paint will just cover that right up. Ta-da, it's gone. Okay, set that down. Now, this is the fun part. If you are working with smaller kids, what you're gonna wanna do is flip this over, start on your outside edge, create a spiral all the way to the center. If you're doing this yourself, you could obviously just freehand it. It's really um, up to you like how comfortable you are doing that. Now, I will say the closer your spiral lines are to each other, the longer this will dangle, okay? The farther apart they are, so if I got them further apart, then it's gonna make my spiral pieces thicker, therefore shorter, okay? Um, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about or you're not really sure what style you wanna go with, just use some old scrap paper and try it both ways. Draw your spiral tight, Man, I don't want to mess up my painting. Okay. Here we go. So we're just going to cut this on around, around and around. Notice that I keep turning it. I do little chomps. Little chomps. Don't stay on your spiral line exactly, that's okay. But notice, see what it's doing? It's creating a spiral, like a three-dimensional spiral, right? By the way, spirals are my favorite lines. Here we go. Now, you obviously would wanna wait until your paint was dry, just FYI. Okay, so now this way, you know, we have where we can't see the color, but if we turn it over, push this to the top, now we can see our color. Now my spiral is kind of long because of, um, you know, I did my lines a little closer together, right? Okay. So now up here at the top, if you have a hole puncher, you could use the hole puncher to do this or very, very carefully use the pointy part of your scissors, put your fingers apart on the back to offer support and not poke yourself. And there we go. We could put a string or a hook through that top hole and then on the bottom, over here you have some options we could tape it together you know like this so that it doesn't hang so low or let it hang whoop, low and down here is where our pot of gold is going to go so i need to think how do i want this i think i want it like like that right sideways whoop, like that okay so on the back, you could glue it or for my sanity purposes, because this part of the plate is so ridged, I'm just going to use some tape across the back, some clear tape. But if you don't like the way that looks, ooh, hot glue could be a good option too. For sure, I love hot glue, guys. Like I literally, when I was in college, used hot glue to make curtains <laughs> in my dorm room and then again in my <clears throat> first apartment and so many other things, pillowcases for throw pillows, you know, all the, <clears throat> all the things. So there we go. This is our very fun, dangly pot of gold. I love it 
so much. So kind of play with it. And like I said, um, this is this is cutting, this is doing a pretty um, spiral with a lot of spirals. As I drew it, remember they were kind of close together. Okay, which means that it made a longer swirly decoration, right? But if you wanted it to be shorter, then you make your spiral thicker, okay? The lines thicker. So not so many lines, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But very fun, I love this so much. I am super excited about this project and I am so happy that you guys hung out with me. I hope that you guys have a very fun, festive, uh, St. Patrick's Day and do all the things to learn about the holiday and the tradition and the culture um, so that it makes it more of a memorable um, day and experience. So thank you guys for real for hanging out with me. Always be kind. I hope that you guys have a great day, a great week, a great month, and a great year. <laughs> Bye, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Okay. So, obviously, I'm still on here. I'm not finished. I'm trying to find my mouse. Where did it go? Sometimes this mouse gets hidden on one of the screens. Ah, here we go. Okay. We're still live on all the platforms, so that's really exciting. I'm just sad that it didn't work the way it was supposed to the first time. It did not put me on Facebook again. I don't know why it's doing that. But like I said, I'll watch a video. I'll figure it out. Um, I am just so happy you guys hung out with me today. Thank you so much. I hope that you have a super beautiful day. Enjoy the beautiful weather that we're having here in Oklahoma because, as always, it will be changing. <laughs> You guys have a happy St. Patrick's Day, a happy hump day, and of course, I'll see you on here again. And if you want to rewatch either one of these projects that I created, they will be uploaded, edited to YouTube, one of them on Friday, one of them the following Monday, or just go over to YouTube and watch the whole crazy long version, and you can get both of them at the same time. <laughs> Bye, guys.